Hey guys, so good evening and welcome to a great edition of uh, FaceTime with Todd Wharton. I'm your host, Todd Wharton, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, had a pretty, pretty uh, great day today. A lot of interesting things have happened. Um, hope you guys are staying out of this bad weather here in New York City. It's kind of cold. Uh, we obviously have a lot of rain, so uh, please be careful out there because the roads are slippery. I want everybody to be safe when they get home. Uh, let's get into some things that are happening today. Um, some really, really great news that I was a part of today. Um, ben Crump was in town. So myself, Ben Crump, Keon Harold, uh, Kat Rodriguez, and the attorney team was on hand today. We held a press conference in Lower Manhattan to announce that uh, Ben Crump has just filed with the Manhattan DA's office. Uh, they are filing a lawsuit against the Arla Hotel. If you guys aren't familiar with this case, Kieran Harold's son got racially profiled and falsely accused of stealing a cell phone. But you know what? Let's not listen to me. Let's hear it from CBS. So let's watch this right now for you. The family of a teenager falsely accused of stealing a cell phone at a Manhattan hotel is filing a lawsuit. The incident happened in December at the Arlo Hotel in Soho. Video appeared to show 22-year-old Mia Ponsetto violently confronting Keon Harold Jr., falsely accusing him of taking her phone. A hotel manager also approached the boy and asked to see the phone, which he did not have. Today, the family filed a lawsuit against both Ponsetto and the hotel. This is racial profiling. 101 America. They violated the human uh, rights law of New York City. This is a test. New York, will you back this law up? The hotel has apologized. Bonsetto now faces multiple criminal charges. So the reason why I'm out there today, I've been fighting a lot for civil rights and Keon's a friend of mine. And it's about time people from all races and all creeds, nationalities, the whole nine get together and stand together. This happens every day. I'm not an African-American, but I'm a human being that sees what's wrong and what's right. And this is wrong. And the Ola Hotel, till this day, has not reached out to Keon Harold and his family personally to apologize. Now, if I'm the CEO of a company and I knew something like this went on, the first thing I would have done is called the people that are spending their hard money on my hotels. And I would call them and be like, I'm so sorry, what can I do for you? This is a very respectful family. That's all they asked for is respect and love. But what the Allo didn't know was is that the same family are also all Grammy Award winning musicians. So now because they took months out of their time and still have not acknowledged personally to the family, we are sorry. Now Ben Crump, who just settled the case for the Floyd family, 27 million, is now going after Allo Hotel. So Allo, you had your chance. But now it's time to divvy up, and that's where rights are going to come in. Because New York State is one of the three states that has a uh, human rights law, and the Yala Hotel has violated that. So now it's time to pay the piper. So I'm going to stand with them. I'm going to stand with Christian Hall. And every wrong thing that's happening in this world, we're going to stand together. White, black, Asian, Latino, Hawaiian, you name it. It's time that everybody stands together and gets off their ass out of the computer and do what's right for human beings. And that's what I have to say right now. Now, let's get to our great guest tonight. Actually, before we do, let's give it up to George Seagal. Um, he just passed away recently, an amazing actor, been in a lot of great movies, and I just heard the news today. So I want to just send my prayers to George Seagal and his family, and I'm very apologetic for what has happened. Now, we have a great actor coming on uh, in a couple of minutes by the name of Malik Whitfield. Amazing actor. You guys may know him from the miniseries Temptations, but he's also been in a lot of other great films like Beyond Enemy Lines, and we're going to show a clip right now from Chicago Med. This scene right here is when his uh, girl is coming out from uh, chemo, and the doctor walked in to tell him some news. So check it out. He's here. Uh-huh. I reviewed your blood work, and it seems that whatever jump-started your immune system to fight off the measles had the added benefit of putting your cancer in remission. What? I'm not. Congratulations, Ben. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Ben. I'm so happy to be back. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Come on, let's go. 
This is the best day ever. Thank you, Dr. Singh. <laughs> so, guys, let's welcome my man, Mr. Malik Whitfield. Malik, how you doing, bro? What's up, brother? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. First of all, thank you for sending me that clip. Um, I said it to Keon once, and I'm not going to do it here, but that actually broke a tear to me, bro, because you killed that scene. And I watched it, I think, like three or four times because my aunt died of cancer. So just seeing something like that, I guarantee you there are people around the country when they watch that scene, it just hit home. And you nailed it. Oh, like, I you thank you. It. I thank you. You know, really, it's like, you know, the phenomenal actresses uh, and the, of course, my scene partner, uh, Marlene, is just incredible, beyond belief. Um, and she makes it so easy. Uh, to oh, yeah. quit and, and, and enjoy and have fun. And even, you know, the, 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 the story, not only that, but the powerful story of just the phenomenal cast of Chicago Med and, and, and Dick Wolf and what they do is just on an exceptional level. And so even, yeah. to, even to like touch on that little, the, the part of not only the cancer survivors uh, and the champions and, and um, the people have been affected by so many of these uh, diseases and autoimmune diseases as well um, is a phenomenal testament to our community of not only family, but friends, because we need to be championed as much as we want to be champions. You yeah. know? And, uh, and it's so important. And we, you know, we, life is so fragile when we look at it, because in one minute we're here and the next minute we're gone. And we lose our loved ones and, and, and so forth in an instant. Um, they are, I am them and they are me. We're interchangeable. And, you know, to be part of uh, the television story, telling a story, which, of course, mimic and resembles uh, life is a phenomenal journey because we know that we all have something to contribute into the wellness of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree. Thank you for saying that. I 100% agree. And uh, you, you spoke that so eloquently. Um, yeah, that scene, um, uh, how, how many times did you have to shoot that? Because that's one of those scenes where it's like, you really want to nail it in order to make it believable. Did you guys do a few takes or you just felt something you just went, wham, let's just get this out. No, you know, it's also, it's, it's, it's definitely a couple of takes and finding the different ranges, but it's also a testament to the collaboration of di directors. There's not just one, there's been quite a few and each one of them fantastic and phenomenal. So, you know, um, what a blessing to be a part of it, but also what a blessing to be a part of their professional, um, uh, their fortitude and, and, and also their outlook and perspective and tying that in. So it becomes a great collaboration because not just in the performance, but these wonderful writers, producers. Yeah. So all of a sudden you realize there's this whole huge team that's kind of rooting and cheering each other on. So it creates an environment that of wellness that we wanna just support each other and lend ourselves to the moment as, as organically and as, as truthful as possible. So, um, you know, we don't even look at, you know, the funny part is, you know, in, in this industry, sometimes we look at it and we go, oh, we have a job to do. Or, oh, I finally got a television show or, or a movie or these small parts. But at the truth of the matter is, oh, my goodness, how great is it to be in an environment that's so supportive and, 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 and allows itself to not only be, you know, you mindful of being accountable for your work, but also so many other people that you can defer to. And that's exciting. So it's so it doesn't even become work. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm loving about TV now, man. I mean, back in the '80s, I think this is where it started to pop. Every show was written for a character of a particular race, right? Mm -hmm. um, today, what I'm loving about the today is every show now is diverse. Pretty much every show, because it's it's starting to prove to people like. You don't need to write characters and then say, well, let's just get that because he's African-American. Let's get this person because mm -hmm. he's Asian. No. How about let's get this person because they're right for the part, right? And it's that's that, what you're seeing a lot more with TV. It's not, that not as well as, still, yeah. it's, well, it's that as well as how exciting is there's so many phenomenal young artists. There's so oh, many yeah. phenomenal artists that have, are 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 
are a little bit older, right? And so in this dynamic social media world that we're in right now and, and hollering and I get to support not only and in, in, in root your, your, your show on and root you on um, and, 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 and want to show up. But then there's, there's all, all these wonderful, phenomenal young artists that I get so excited about because, you know, when, when it lends itself to new opportunities and new faces, I get excited, you know, I get yeah. really excited, you know, because there's even in the in the facet of music and these artists should have opportunities to keep venturing out because all of us are not the sum of one thing with the sum mm -hmm. of many things. And so yeah. when we encompass that, then we should all be able to have those opportunities to explore them. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And I love you're hitting every aspect of that. And I think Netflix, whether people know it or not, Netflix is really sort of creating this platform that's giving young artists, especially in acting, uh -huh. a feel. Because every show that I'm seeing now are all kids I've never seen before. You and look, they're giving them more and more shows, and I'm I loving look, it. I look at it as that. I look at it as, you know, when we get to look at, you know, what is a type? It's all perspective, right? It's all perspective and mm -hmm. perception. So if you like a particular show, okay, then if that draws you in, then that's exciting because entertainment is also to be swept away and taken away. And if it's reality right. television or if it's love and hip hop, I also fall in love with all these young characters too because they also get to tell a story from different perspectives. So we're not just in one in one box, you know, and as a young actor coming up in New York and the Bronx, it was like, hey, you get to be thug one, you get to be thug two. And I'm like, uh, can I get something more than thug one and thug two? But you know, it's it's still the core essence that not only do we start from something, but we keep evolving because that's the seed. And 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 then the most important part is, what do we do when we choose to quit? What do we do when we choose and we get we get a little tired? Who do we look to, right? And so when we have that foundation of family, when we have that foundation of of loved ones and companions, when we have that foundation of a best friend that says, oh, today. No, not yeah. today. No, not on my watch. You know, dig a little deeper, go a little further. Sometimes yeah. I got to lift you up. Sometimes I got to push you up. And sometimes I might just have to force you up because not on my watch, I have to make sure that we hold each other accountable to lift each other up, you know, and not drag each other down because, you know, there's no two days the same. And for every high, if we chase the high, then we must feel the low. And so how do we oh, find yeah. that balance in, in this journey and not just the creative arts and the entertainment, right? Because it's still touching on business, you know, but also the people that lend themselves to support our careers, that lend ourselves to champion following and saying, you know what, I loved you in the last thing, keep going, you know? And, and so that inspiration, it's just, to me, it's like a family barbecue. We're all family at the barbecue. Like, let's enjoy the time. Let's play some spades. Let's drink a beer together. And we're so interconnected that this world is really, really small. And, and, and we see the effects by the negative. But what, it, what does it look like when we're the positive wave, the wave that comes in and the wave that goes out? But when we that wave, that's pretty special. Oh, man. I, I got to tell you something. I'm a public speaker, but you are blowing me away right now. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm inspired and there's a lot of people in here loving the way you speak I, i've never heard you we spoken off camera um and we had great combos but now that i'm literally listening to you as a, a show host bro you can throw it down like you can speak oh, now man. It, you I'm know what this, man. i want to get some popcorn big man take off look take dog, it's, it, you know what it comes from my mama it comes from my dad, and I honestly have to say that because it comes from the moments that I could not hear, that I could not listen when I'm the young kid that think I thought I figured it out. It comes from those moments of saying, okay, I have so much more to learn. But then also I realized that every day I got so much more to learn. So how, what a blessing that is, you know, that I wake up and I'm like, it's not just learning it in, in, in the theoretical or the physical, it's the it's that journey that so many other people have so much to give us. You know, I learned from you. Um, I learned from your inspiration. I learned from your dynamic uh, commitment on this pathway. Because when we start talking about changing lives, 
and speaking about the voices of others and the voiceless. You know, yeah. I was once a young kid feeling like I'm not sure if I have a voice. I'm not mm -hmm. sure of what I sh can say or what I should say. And all of a sudden, when we get to look back in the mirror, we're looking ourselves in the mirror and saying, you know what? I think today it's okay to invest in you. When you go out and invest in the job, whether you work for, you know, the, the government, the civil servant, you know, it doesn't matter if you work at the grocery store, you keep investing in other companies. Well, it's yeah. also okay to invest in you and feel good about investing in you. Even when we look in the mirror and say, you know what, today wasn't a great day, but I'm still loving the way you, you know, follow through with the day. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. And you want to know something, I think one part of your grind, um, and I, and I lived there for probably about a year and a half, I think total, you're from the Bronx. Yes. As you mentioned. Um, what part of the Bronx, if you don't mind me asking where you're originally from? You know, I, dude, you know what? Well, I'm from one seven. I have to ask that because you know, everybody really, moves around real, in the Bronx. Well, you know what? There's a real interesting journey, you know, and even for my Brooklynites and my brothers from Queens and Manhattan, there's something that's really interesting when you grow up in the Bronx. Uh, and when I grew up in the Bronx, it's changed a bit now, but it's such a community. And so I can say I'm from 179 Tremont and Burns. But the truth of the matter is you can catch me in Capitol Hill, you can catch me in Gun Hill, you can catch me in uh, Soundview Projects, you know, and then not only that, you actually know everyone in that journey and in those buildings yeah. and playing basketball and running around as a young kid playing stickball that our lives intertwine so much that I get excited that I bump into people all the time and, uh, and it's and it's and, and it's still family and even younger family members and 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 it just spans so many generations. I grew up down the block from Chino and Brian when they were the New York City breakers, you know, and they would venture off and go to China and Japan. I'd be like, China, Japan, what are you doing out there? You know, I'm like, maybe I can spin on my neck and hopefully not break it, you know. <laughs> and so there's all this inspiration when we even talk about that wealth and music. But it's really not about the wealth of, of talent. It's about the wealth of uh, this attitude and energy to dig a little deeper and not give up. And because our circumstances don't look pretty and our burnt down buildings that are surrounding us, Detroit, or, we, or the gunshots start to ring out a lot like Chicago, that doesn't mean that we put our head down and we don't inspire to live a little bigger and dream deeper, exactly. you know? Exactly. 100% agree with you. Let me ask you something based on that family thing. What I've noticed about the Bronx is family's huge. Um, I actually lived in the projects for uh, some time, not a long time. And the one thing I love was everybody, like you said, knew each other. Mm. Now, the other thing I did notice, and it's not to put anybody down, it's a comfortability. Um, I've noticed that there are some people that love where they live because they know everybody. Now, I also see that a lot of people tend to never want to leave a certain area because they feel outside their element when they don't know. Ooh, come on now. Come on. That happens a lot. And um, I have to respect the family part because I understand the comfortability. When, you're, when you live in a neighborhood, and I was one of the only white people in that neighborhood, but I was treated with so much love, like, hey, yo, what's up, and this and that. It was awesome. And you feel sick, right? But then a lot of these people are so talented that that safeness and that enclosure, it's sort of like they put a box around themselves and they never really see if there's opportunities out there yeah. because they I get look, so used to that comfortable. I look at it differently. You know what? I just well, at it, I, yeah. I, I, you know why? You know why I say that? I look at it in this capacity that I too would have been a young man only interested in going to Fordham Road to go buy clothes in, the, in Fordham Road because yeah, what, well, use yeah, was it for, what use for, was it for me to go down the 34th Street or 42nd Street, right? Because mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it's more reasonable for me to go to a place that's closer or go to 149th and 3rd Avenue or go check Juman right. to see where the new hot sneakers are, right? So right. the journey is, is that we need as many opportunities to break ourselves not only out the box, but also to get opportunities to people to to see what's going on in different places, spaces, and things, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I think that, that comes with a lot 
It brings a lot of comfortability and complacency when we don't have an interest or we don't have family members like, hey, I'm in Florida, come check me out. Oh, I'm in LA, come see me. Oh, you know, right. I'm in Chicago, come spend a summer. So when we, are, we're, when we have more opportunities to kind of span in different directions, we, just got, we start to see not only the similarities, but we also start to take the, and add on to the positives that we do like, that we yeah. do get connected with. And then that draws us to another space that says, you know what? I think I'm ready to step out and try something new, you know? Yeah. But, but, you know, if we get caught in the hustle and the bustle and the grind of things, many a times it's like, you know, today I'm just trying to make it through today. You know, there was a saying when I was growing up, they'd be like, you know what? I mean, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't lose for winning, you know? <laughs> and, and it was that interpretation that even when you tried your best, there was all these strikes still against you. You know, um, a lot of people knew whether you were in the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Harlem, you know, being pulled over by the police and you were doing nothing or all of a right. sudden getting a citation or a ticket because you were hanging out with your friends, all of a sudden puts you in a new New York state of mind, which says, Dag, I'm under I'm under pressure every moment. Right. And so what does that look like when we are in a different space, place or time or in Jamaica or in DR or wherever that is, and all of a sudden we just listen to the ocean and things are quiet and we don't hear the, we don't hear sirens. It does yeah. something different to our spirit, creates a different movement, you know. Yeah. And I think that our younger kids that we have out there, we have to give them those uh, opportunities, you know. Yeah, and I 100 percent, 100 percent. You mentioned you mentioned the police because I always do these funny parodies. You just gave me another one. I think I'm going to do one where. I'm going to be a regular citizen and I'm going to pull over a cop and be like, hey, can I have your license and registration? You ran that red light back there. He's going to look at me and be like, what? You already, <laughs> you already, know, you already know that's a true story somewhere. Exactly. So. That's why it makes it funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like some guy in a Hyundai is going to pull over a New York State trooper and be like, license and registration, sir. But, you know, it's, it's also it's so interesting because, you know, um, the... Police have gotten such a, that you know, under a mindful eye. Why? Because it's the insensitivity that's going on, the lack of humanity. We're missing a lot of compassion and empathy for so many people out here. Yeah. Because like I said, in an instance, I'm you and you're me. But at the end of the day, if I'm standing there, who's going to step up and say, are you okay? Are you all right? What's really right. going on, right? Because everybody will pull their phone out but who's going to come save us? And sometimes we're in this state of mind, like, then if I got to take accountability to save myself, what does that mean? Does that mean I need to be armed with education, information, where I should not be, where I can go? What's really free, right? We grew up in the projects, but I guess the project is really America. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. A lot of work to be done. I like that, yo. I love that analogy you just put there. Like, I grew up in the projects, but the real project is America. Somebody, some politician, please use that. Senator Booker, <laughs> you listening right now? Please use that. That's dope, man. I like that. I like that a lot, oh, man. So that's good. Because God knows America is the biggest project right now that needs to be refurbished, rebranded. And it's straight retarded right now. <laughs> it's well, just, you know, it really is. But but also, you know, that's why it's important what we feed ourselves, right? It's important what we're digesting. You know, a lot of information, and we need to be uh, mindful of the information we digest because there are so many phenomenal good people out there. There's so many people out there that are out there uh, striving on the political forefront, um, on the social forefront you know, helping the families in need. When I look at the homeless, that would, you know, it, it touches me deeply. When I look at the crisis of our job situations and our financial instability for families and resources and where are we going towards education, right? Because, yeah. because you know, even when as a young kid, it's, you, you hear the term, education is key, education is key. Well, well why is it? Well, well, because what we don't know, we need to defer that somebody that, that, can help us, but also transparency is the most important, right? Because even if you have education or you have a lawyer that can really be an advocate for you, if their transparency is truly to help and not just monetize you 
and say, oh, sorry, can't do any more for you. Need a little bit more money, right? If that's the incentive. So we need the, to, to have that much more education because it, it, it spearheads passion. It spearheads these brilliant minds. When I see these young artists, um, you know, in different facets, you know, I see these phenomenal comedians that nobody sees, right? Or we see in different parts of New York or, or California or Chicago and they're working their circuit, but they're just incredible beyond belief, right? And so someone just needs to keep shining a light and they have to keep making sure that they don't let their personal light get turned off because yeah. it's, it's magnetic, it's phenomenal, and it's also inspiring, you know? So I, I get excited about that, you know? Um, I'm, I'm gonna touch on it for a second. I, I started working with some new students, new acting students, and, and well, and I love it. That would be my next question. Dude, it. Because it was so inspiring to me. And, and I want to speak on them for a second because, you know, I wanted yeah. the opportunity from all the places that I trained, uh, Strasbourg, or Herbert Berghoff, Uta Hagen, and all these wonderful uh, uh, conservatories and schools that I was able to be at. I said, what, what, what could it look like if I'm, I got an opportunity to work with other students? And so I'm working with students in, in Ohio, in Atlanta, in Alabama you know, in Mississippi, uh, in Florida, in Chicago, um, and LA, you know, and so to see the, the depths of the talent, I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed and, and inspired by them and just, and, and filled with so much gratitude. Yeah. You should be. I mean, oh. you're, you're feeling the feeling of, you pretty, you pretty much describe uh, something that my father said to me, because my father was a teacher and he was a crisis intervention teacher in Brooklyn helping kids that couldn't go to a regular school. Wow. And he said something to me. Yeah, I, I was scared for him every day when he went to work. Because he brought me there one day and some big 200 pound sister, I'm 15, she's 18. <laughs> she, she looked at me like, white boy, you in my chair. And I'm like, dad. <laughs> You know, she just wanted. She just wanted to check you, just to make sure you everything is everything is good. Everything me. good. <laughs> and then Mr. Warden turns around. It's like, is there a problem? It's like, nah, Mr. Warden. I'm just getting to know your son. And I'm just like, Dad, I want to go home. But but right. check this. But check this out. This is so how dope it is, right? Because yeah. I I never was interested in the acting. I was never interested in the arts. But I had a teacher. You know, I got kicked out of Walton High School. I ended up going to Satellite. Um, um, in Bronx Regional, which is pretty much your alternative oh, yeah. last chance yeah. schools, right? And I was fortunate enough to have a teacher who introduced me to acting, who introduced me to the arts, who introduced me uh, to so many opportunities. It was her, her light and also her energy that helped change the course of my path and open me to a whole new world of experience. So how grateful am I? Of course you are. And I think what I, I, I lost track for a sec when I, when I was speaking, because I always go on tangents, but you went through what every teacher goes through. And in the story is when a teacher's on, writing on the board, right? they turn around and all faces are looking at them, listening. Mm -hmm. You're, you probably went through that same moment when you're teaching these kids, seeing them aspire to greatness. Well, knowing that they've been listening to your craft and they've been infused in it, seeing that I'm making a difference and I'm making a difference with these amazing kids. Well, you know, what's dope is, you know, I, I, and I had some other parables to that because when I was in school, I really wasn't, I was really ready to check out. I really wasn't that excited about being in school. I thought, you know, my world would be filled with that journey of I'm a hustler and, I, and, 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 uh, and, and if money makes the world better, then that's what I really want to be connected to, right? Because if that if that helps my mom not to be working all those overtime hours and for us not to see each other, how do I go get that, right? And so that misdirection for me was being in school and not wanting to be in school. But here was mm -hmm. this fearless teacher who was willing to challenge me. And I was like, who's this woman to kind of keep challenging me? You know, what's that? Why wouldn't you leave me and allow me to be complacent or become another young lost kid, right? And then all of a yeah. sudden we have that action that chooses the person who who, who become who, who become teachers and and the liaisons to help in all these other people's lives. That's the game changer, you know. Yeah. And so the way in which 
I see the community in Chicago with the teachers and the unions. We've got to really lift them up, you know, um, get through these difficult times in COVID because we've all been affected so directly, you know, losing personal loved ones, family members, dear friends, uh, friends of, of our close friends, their loved ones. You know, so we're all caught in the ripple of that that healing cycle, but every day trying to breathe through it, even when the air gets a lot thin. You know, so so you know, I'm I'm just grateful. You know, and teachers are so powerful. You know, oh. um, and 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 not only that, but what they give, but what they give selflessly. You know, and so when I look at those community activists that are out there, standing out there, putting in the time putting in that energy, not allowing anyone to feel alone, you know, because we have a wave of, of this depression that's going on with our young people, all ages, right? Because we have to know that their lives uh, can make such a big difference. And, and when I hear about the, you know, depression that swept us to such a, a level where people are taking their lives, we have to let them know, no, 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 you're not alone. You know, what can we do better and how can we show up that much more to lift each other up because uh we're the change we are the change yeah. i think uh teachers should be respected a lot more unfortunately with covid um they've been taking a back seat and the main reason is because most schools have been closed for over a year yeah. uh -huh. and nurses and military finally are getting the recognition that they deserve so our front line but I do consider teachers on the front line, even though they haven't been there a lot this year. They've been home doing it, but white doctors and nurses and military are saving our lives physically. Teachers are building our lives mentally. So when you put those two people together, the front line of the nurses, doctors with the teachers, that's your front line right there. Because if it's not for these people, who knows where we're going to be? Who knows who we are? Listen. Who knows how our minds not being expanded? And there's, of, and there's so many people are. also not yeah. even being spoken about, you know? And 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 the people who aren't being spoken about, they are, are phenomenal heroes and sheroes of, of today and tomorrow, you know? Because when they show up for us, all of these people show up for us, all of a sudden it gives our spirit a opportunity to stay connected, you know? Because we can have all the 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 you know what's all the knowledge if we don't want to turn into wisdom but the wisdom to understand that when the spirit is no longer present then we're then we've checked out you know and inspiring the spirit you know becomes so important you know um and being connected to that and it doesn't matter what religion you are it's just about that inspiration and and that that drive for for hope not to be extinguished definitely and you're right about the spirit. I mean, if my spirit ever leaves my body, that's why I have a bar in my house. So I just go get myself some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. So but, don't, uh, guys, you know, it don't sound like you're dropping any out on the on, on in the floor for the homies or anything. No, like that. You know what I'm uh, saying? No, I do, but I use like I use the, I use the speed rack when I do that. Uh, I don't want to waste the good stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not mad at you. Off. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at here's you. Just being off. Here's my Syrah. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, it's man. Exactly. Sometimes you gotta, you know, leave the don the, the 1942. You know what I'm saying for for the glass. So you got yes, to, you got to, you know. And if you guys are tuning in right now, I'm talking with Malik Whitfield. You can definitely follow him at Instagram, Malik Whitfield. Very simple. You can follow me, Top Warden Official, W H A R T O N. I'm interviewing intelligent, inspirational celebrities five nights a week. So getting back to Malik, because I always got to do those little plans. Come on. Come on. All right. Uh, besides, uh, we're going to go through a little. We're going to speed it up. This thing just popped out of me a little bit. Um, first of all, one life to live. Soap opera. Woo, come on. That up. We're, we're going to go back. Now, how, how did you like being in the soap opera era? Because I don't think people understand soap opera gets a bad rep. And there's a reason why. And I spoke about this with Rima Webb, the Broadway star. Mm. And I, I was an extra in a soap opera, right? And when you're an extra, you actually see everything. I didn't know because it's my fault because I used to think soap opera actors were horrible, right? Right. But 
it's my fault because I didn't know. You guys are handed monologues. Al Pacino style monologue. <laughs> the day of the show. That you got to read this bad boy. A couple of hours later, hit that set and be on point. And I was like, damn. Well, I'm, that's it's, crazy. Well, you know what? Um, one life to live. I had a wonderful time doing that. It was a really, really great learning curve for me because I didn't have any uh, ex expectation of what I really was getting into too as a young actor. But being yeah. there, being there, all of a sudden, it was like, hey, uh, you got a day to learn this. You got a day to learn that. So every day was a new show, right? Wow. Um, and so what it does is. It, you know, it's kind of like in life, it's kind of like growing up in the Bronx, it's kind of like growing up in Queens, it's kind of like growing up anywhere in New York City, or these other tough cities, Baltimore, whatever, right? What happens is it's called a forced growth. And yeah. it forces you to grow. And it doesn't allow you to sink. It just allows you to swim in the deep and keep getting better. And so what I loved about it is that it gave me an opportunity to learn on the job. Um, there were wonderful actors on the job, some very giving, you know, and, and others th that couldn't be as giving. They were doing exactly what I was trying to do, trying to keep up, you know? Um, so, so I was really, really grateful for that experience. You know, there's so many great actors there, you know, to this day. Um, when I think of, uh, you know, soap operas, I think of my boy, Christoph St. John. I mean, that's my, my brother, um, rest in peace. What a phenomenal artist. What a phenomenal spirit. What a wonderful man, you know, that I, that I, that I, that I was so thankful to be not only uh, spend time with, but then you, you get these relationships that you hold on to um, over the time. And you realize, you know, this, this, this special thing that young artists do right we're competitive or even when i hear these things like versus this artist versus that artist but it's really not right it's this competitive juice that that pushes each other that says i want to show up and i want to be accountable but i want to show up and and also be a professional and i want to show up and and i know they're going to show up that ups my game a little bit and that up upmanship in, in, in that category lends itself and then you realize it's not about that it's just about the connection. It's just about spending the time with other wonderful artists. And, and then sometimes you take the lead and sometimes you follow and you support and you push and you lift. And so there's so many different other components than just, hey, hey, guess what? Look at me, you know? Yeah, 100%. And I, I love how you're saying how you're meeting all different people. Because when I was looking at your career, um, I've probably seen a lot of the shows, but just didn't realize it at the time. You did a lot of cameo roles on CSI Miami. Yeah. The game of my boy Poots and Wendy Raquel Robinson. That's I was right. On the phone with uh, with Sharon, her publicist, a couple of days ago. And I'm trying to get her on. Um, wonderful people that you had the the chance to work with. And of course, we can't neglect which you speak about plenty of times. The amazing miniseries of The Temptations. Um, we can't leave that out because. I mean, the temptations up on the roof, you know. No, I, you you know, talk about Susan the past, you know, that's yeah. what we're really talking about. We're talking about Susan the past and Susan Costin and 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 John Picker and and the Hallmark crew. We're talking about you know people really persevered. And when I think of even Susan the past, uh, what she championed, right? So, and, and let me just give an information for people who don't know, right? Yeah, Susan definitely. the past who championed. Uh, Loan, loan, uh, 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 I think Lonesome Dove. Uh, she championed the Michael Jackson story, the Jacksons. She championed right. the Temptations. And so, as a woman, you know, in this industry, as we've gone through this expansion of seeing so many dynamic, phenomenal women creating all this magic uh, out here, so inspiring. And, and this woman was doing it under circumstances, and to watch her do it. Uh, but every time knowing that she had to start back at one, she had to start back yeah. at one. Um, and so just because you accomplished something, it didn't allow you to say, oh, here's an automatic 
segue into something else. And, I, and, and from that, I got to have so much gratitude and appreciation. So no matter where I ended up or no matter what opportunity I had, I always look at it as starting back at one, um, not lending itself to what was just done, but being thankful to be present for the moment right now. You know, mm -hmm. and so staying present in the moment allows us to move forward and know that in an instant we can always uh, reinvent ourselves, if that's the term, or go into another phase and transition of our career um, and, and, and look back and also be thankful, but not regretful, right? Yeah. Not, you know, because you, you can't hold on, you know, I, I, no matter how much I love the journey of the temptations. And the, the gentlemen that I got to work with, I mean, all of them, brilliant. I mean, yeah, those are my brothers. Love them. Go ahead, you, Ben. You, no, no, no. You mentioned, I wanted to plug this in there. You mentioned amazing people you work with. Yes. You, you have worked with so many. But the one that stands out, and I did the promo today from the movie, um, you got to work with the great Gene Hatton. Yes, I did, yeah. I have to throw that name in there because he's up there with the Pacino, the Denzel, Sidney Poitier. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a people don't realize in Hollywood there is an A list, right? Which you're on, but then there's that season A list, meaning that that career, right? Like right. 40, 50 years of just unbelievable movies. And when you think of these guys, you think of Sidney Poitier, right? You think of Denzel Washington. You think of Gene Yeah. And how was it to work with this guy? I mean, the movies that he's been in has been crazy. The list. You know, I think that when you get to go around names such as, just, like you said, the Denzel Washingtons, the Gene Hackmans, uh, the, you know, uh, the Delroy Lindos, there's so, there's so many, right? Um, yeah. And so phenomenal for the experiences, the Sam Jacksons, Latanya uh, Richardson, his wife. There's so many fantastic, you know, um, artists, Ruben Santiago Hudson. And so what lends itself to excellence for me, even with the Kenny Leons when I was younger, working with him and all that he's done and what he champions, mm -hmm. what, what yeah. the connective consistent thread with, with all of them is, they're always willing to, to not force teach you, but teach you by example. Uh, and, and, and being able to teach you by example is not only being able to understand how the preparation, their commitment to their professionalism, the times that I've spent with John Voigt uh, uh, um, over the years, but also how they show up as a professional and that that changes from show business to business right mm -hmm. and that attribute and then the accountability of the subtext and the context well what are we really trying to say what am i really trying to accomplish even if i choose to be an actor in a film am i choosing actually to be the prop or am i choosing to be the machine to really push and tell the story right so we look at it in different parallels um, mm -hmm. at some times for an artist, right? And so some people are in it to become famous and some people are in it to maybe sometimes to stay nameless and create another career so they can explore. That's like a line of the song right there. Right? I mean, <laughs> that, that, that right? sounds like a perfect line. Of, that's yeah. awesome. I like because that. I remember working with Robert De Niro, right? And I remember working with him and asking these questions. And, and I was like, oh, Mr. De Niro, Mr. De Niro. And I did this movie way back in the day, Night in the City, had this little role, you know, a uh, few lines. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mr. Darrell, Mr. Darrell, you know, like, well, you know, I, I can ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, sure, kid. But, you know, I, I, I really want to have a great career. I want to have a long career. And so maybe you can give me some tips because I really want to make this happen. And uh, he said, kid, just end up in a room full of survivors. Just survive. And so, it changes the perspective. We can't allow one moment to become too great that we, we, don't, we stop going because the moment didn't come out like we wanted it to. You exactly. know, there are no perfect moments. There'll be inconsistent moments. There'll be moments where we fall short. There's times where, you know, I, I look up and I, I go, oh, so proud of this work. And then I go, I look at something else and I go, ah, come on, Malik. 
step it up a little bit, right? And so we, we have to be in a space not only to forgive ourselves, but also to champion ourselves, to not quit, to continue our growth. That, that's our growth machine, you know? But how wonderful it is to be in a room full of survivors, um, to experience them, right? Because it's to enjoy their company, you know? And it becomes that, that, that uh, legacy journey when we're in the room and, and we think of Cicely Tyson and we think of, of, of Cicely Tyson and all that she's given. We think of, uh, 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 I mean, I mean, come on, Sidney Poitier, right? All that, he's he's given, all that, he's, all that he's given, all that That's he's given. Right? That. And, and they give so much more. The Harry Belafonte's give so much more than they probably ever receive. But yeah. going through that journey, we also say, if we could be in the room with your wonderful grandmother, with your great grandfather, all this wisdom is so precious. So we have to also not only uh, pay homage, but also take care of these beautiful spirits out there. When I see the Lena Hathaways and I see the Ava DuVernay's and I see what Oprah does and, and, and how she is a, an, a catalyst, a active catalyst to creating a positive community. Then we say, well, I want to be a part of that community, right? But we actually have an opportunity to create our own community and our own community is interconnected with all communities because it's what we choose to put out there and what we yeah. choose to connect because your loved ones, your family, your friends, they become my loved ones and family and friends. And so all of a sudden we look around and all of a sudden we're surrounded by people who love and care for us and then we can live in our truth and transparency and say, today wasn't that good, but somebody else is here to lift me, lift them up and go, well, guess what? Where you thought you were supposed to be, you wasn't supposed to be. You'll know where you're supposed to be the minute you're really there. And you'll go, oh, I thought all the while I was supposed to have that movie. But the truth of the matter, I wouldn't have been available for this movie. So you never know where you think you want to go. Sometimes God will put you where you need to be and sometimes sit you down so you just can do, do the number one thing and I'm going to do it right now. And it's silence. Mm -hmm. and you just yeah. got to listen and God's going to speak. Uh, 100%. And Greg Nice, I believe, was co-signing what you were saying. He, he's on My guy, tough. DX, I love my brother. Tough. Yeah, love there's you. a lot of great people. You got a lot of great people in here. I'm just loving this conversation right now. Uh, we have about eight minutes left, so we have a little little time. I asked this uh, question to John Amos, and I'm doing this with a lot of great actors. Um, Broadway has been affected hardcore here in New York City, right? Um, a lot of actors are really showing up and showing out. If you were offered a part here in New York to play in Broadway, would you consider it? Absolutely. I mean, I love Broadway. Yeah. I mean, I have some mm -hmm. ideas. <laughs> I got some ideas, you know. Um, I won't share them, but I have some ideas. I think more proactive ideas than I did many years ago. Um, yeah. But I love the stage. I love Broadway. I love what it, what it gives us. It gives us uh, the essence of our foundation and also rebirth. You know, so many times you, you take the car in for a tune-up and you, you realize that you know, you don't just need to tune up. You need to change the fan belt, get new, new tires, all the, all of the above. And you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know there was so much work to be done. Maybe I shouldn't have went in there. And that's what Broadway's like. When you get in there with Broadway, all of a sudden you're like, I thought I just came in here to to, to get an oil change. I got to change the tires. I got to do this. The fan belts out. Oh, okay. So it's time to change that and get some new work in there and, and, and to, 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 to realign ourselves many a time. And that's what I, I think about uh, Broadway, you know, and also yeah. to be seen in a different light, to see my, my boy Ulysses Torero, another, uh, he's just a game changer, a life changer out there, not only acting coaches, but also his dynamic journey of what he lends to so many people out there and artists in New York and Latinos in New York, right? Because we're the sum of so much more than anyone that could ever put a box on us, you know? And yeah. so even as I see these wonderful comments come up, they come up, right? And it's a community of our family and loved ones and friends because we're never not even just from the Bronx. All of a sudden you're like, I thought you was from Brooklyn. I thought you was from here. I thought you was from Chi-Town. You know, and I also have to send a shout out to my 
my Tate brothers. You know, there's three of them, three beautiful ones. Lamar Tate, Laron Tate, Lorenz Tate, the Tate yeah. brothers. And what they're doing, they're doing some dynamic, wonderful things. I want people to tune in, download it, right? It's an iPod. I did season one with them, season two. The, I, the, 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 the iPod whole session is free, right? It's Apple, Spotify, yeah. however you want it. It's called Bronzeville. Bronzeville, season one, season two. And what they're doing with Larry Fishburne and Helen Suglin, who've segued to tell the dynamic stories back in the, you know, in the 50s in Chicago, a real dynamic area where these young African-American people were taking over and being proactive about how they wanted to have their own successes in their community. Phenomenal, right? And so I have yeah. to lend my, my voice out to some of those names because we start thinking about casting people, right? And you go, Malik, well, I saw you on that project. Well, what about the Leah Daniels, right? What, a, what, a, what about the Jackie Browns who cast t Temptations and, 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 and so many other hit movies, right? The Kim Coleman's. I mean, the names go on, right? The Twinkie Birds, right? Because then what we're talking about is, is so many multifaceted levels to the industry that to be thought of is not just to be thought of because you want to be thought of and heard. It's that other people are really actually thinking about you. And that kind of lends itself not only to stay around and have a rebirth. And that's why I honor the Temptations movie so much because um, whether you know it or not, for me, even when I wanted to quit in the industry um, and call it raps and go do something else, for me, what I was so uh, grateful for is that because it was played so much on VH1, it kept my, my face and my name yeah. fresh in the eyes of our younger people. Yeah, and millennium. so this yeah. story was told, but, but who am I to play Otis in The Temptations and not tell you the story of Otis Williams, the real Otis Williams, who's still around right. doing shows, who's still around putting a big album out right now, who also took, you know, um, um, the, 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 the Temptations to Broadway. It took, no, you know, nobody tells, they see where, where the results, but don't know the journey. Took him only 18 years to, for him to get it to Broadway. But in those 18 years, he didn't stop, right? Yeah. And so yeah. that we have to pay homage to, you know. These are our treasures, you know. These are our treasures that, that we're surrounded with. And, and, and in honoring them, we know that we, we, there's nothing that we do alone. There's nothing I do alone. Yeah, and I love how you mentioned pay homage to a lot of these brothers. And I'm going to plug him right now. He just uh, tuned in, my boy Keon Harold. Yes. He just saw. Yes. He just plugged in right now. Um, you guys want to talk about a great brother? That guy, first of all, Malik, you're an amazing dude. You've always have been. But Keon, I got to show him love today. And yes. he just filed the lawsuit. He's here now. He's around the country performing, um, doing his thing. Him and Kat, amazing people. Let me tell you, like, I, 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 I follow, Pico, I follow you, him. I believe Keon's music and, and, and so many other are just phenomenal and dynamic. Uh, um, uh, I, I believe that every unfortunate circumstance or situation is still a learning lesson for so many of us. Because like I said, I am you, you are me. In an instant, we don't know what we're going to go through, but we have to be present to make sure that, that we're there to help lift each other up. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to share this with you real quick before you segue to Keon real quick. I had an, um, I, I, I had an incident with my older son. He's about to be 25 soon. He almost did eight years. Um, the DA kept trying to, uh, he, had a car, he had a car accident, but they wanted to give him uh, a, you know, a, 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 a put him under for eight years because it was called street racing, which it wasn't. But every step of the way, I was told about all of his, his uh, you know, we've got him on Instagram, we've got these texts, we've got that. These were DAs and they were lying every step of the way, you know? And so I'm so grateful that he has a second and a reprieve towards his life and I'm looking for him to doing mm -hmm. wonderful things. But just in an instant, we're caught up and swept up in the throes of life. And we can't yeah. do any of it without other people's not only accountability, but also being present and standing by and supportiveness. Yeah, and thank you for saying all this. Malik, you know I could talk to you for like hours. Hey, man, look, 
look, I and 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 I'm telling you, it'd be the same with you, with Ulysses, and so many other wonderful people. And when I think of, you know, um, and and let me share this too. When I think of the dancing and the temptations, uh, I only learned that because of Christian Payton. He worked with me, you know, day and night, late night. I mean, you know, most you have to think of that's a selfless artist. When I think mm -hmm. of, you know, um, you know, uh, all ev everyone that was there, you know, from Leon and 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 uh, to Ron Brooks, you know, and my boy DB Woodside, and then I think of Chaz. Do uh, you know this? We're talking about phenomenal artists coming together and lend themselves. You know, because when we were supposed to do the movie, the movie originally was supposed to be 12 hours. They said, and I don't think there's an, a platform for it. No one wants to see a story about five black men. And of course, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter whose story it is, what ethnic race you are, whether you're Latin, Asian, whatever, our stories and every story is pretty darn important. I think we should and right on that. And that's a that, boom cat. I'm gonna drop the mic, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw the that mic. Is, that right there <laughs> is the perfect end to a perfect interview. But you know I'm gonna have you on another like five times, especially I'm working on getting a full studio audience already, which is in talks right now, which is crazy. So I'm like, you know. But um, Leek, it's been a pleasure having you on tonight, bro. Oh. It, it really has, I'm, I'm inspired right now listening to you. Uh, why I have you on, I want to let people know. Make sure you follow this great man, Malik Whitfield, on Instagram. Uh, follow me, Todd Wharton Official, Celebrities Five Nights a Week from all industries. Got to let you guys know about what's coming up. Tomorrow night, we got Mr. Cheeks from the Lost Boys coming here tomorrow night. Friday night, got my girl Angie Stone is going to be in the house Friday. You tell them I said hello. That's what I'm saying. Well, you got to tell it yourself. Yeah. You, you better be checking in. I know. If you want, I'm going to be like, Angie, hey, should we bring the weekend? And you know, Mr. Cheeks, Mr. Cheeks, I send my love. He has such a beautiful family. Um, no yep. other members of the family. Beautiful family. Angie Stone, just ugh, lights out. Incredible. I, I can't even wait. And then the <laughs> following week, yeah, bro. And then the following week, just to wrap that up, we got Rock This Monster. We got Mark John Jeffries in the house. Young Dirty Bastard. Hector Macho Camacho is fighting Hector Chavez. He'll be here Thursday. And then we got to wrap it up because even though it's the last week technically in March, which is still Ladies Month, I'm going to have my girl Tara Wallace from Love and Hip Hop going to be up on here. So, guys, this is the man Malik Whitfield. Check him out. He's been a lot of great things. Check him out on Chicago Med. And he's got a lot of stuff coming up. And I can't wait to see your career just continue. We got a lot of new things. We, we're like looking to segue. Um, we're going to get a few more things done behind the camera as well. So we won't stop because the truth of the matter is you can't stop. Got to go. Got to keep it rocking. Exactly. And thank you, guys. Thank you for your words, Malik. Thank you for my virtual audience for tuning in. Please follow me every night. We're going to have a great time with these great guests. Wear your mask. Practice social distancing because no matter what color you are at the end of the day, COVID don't give a crap. We're all in this together. We're all human beings. And we all have to respect what Bob Marley always told us. Put your L's up for one love. Guys, if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life are you living? That's right. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow night.